Just before Mass begins, it's my great pleasure on behalf of the diocese to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. To Frank's immediate family, first and foremost, it's wonderful that we can all be together to share this fantastic occasion. And so you're very welcome to the diocese. And thank you for giving Frank to our diocese. To those of you who have come as our special invited guests, you're particularly welcome. Our guests from other churches, our guests from civic society, our parishioners throughout the diocese, to everyone who is here to celebrate with the diocese on this memorable occasion. And I just invite you to participate as fully as possible. It's going to be a wonderful celebration and a wonderful sing. And so there's something great about having hymns that everyone can sing. And so I just invite you to sing with all the gusto that you have, because this is us giving glory and praise to God for what we have today. A word for those who are joining us through the live streaming. You're particularly welcome today as well. And again, we invite you to participate as fully as you can in this joyful and outpouring of the Holy Spirit celebration. Immediately at the end of Mass, you're invited to go to St. Matthew's School in Solcoats. Our new bishop will not be meeting people here. He will meet you all in St. Matthew's School. So please, if you can go there where there's some refreshments and everything will be set out there. So please, immediately after Mass, rather than hanging about, go to St. Matthew's School and then there'll be an opportunity to meet our new bishop. I can also remind you when the Mass is over, to put your mobile phones back on. Just do that, so please remember. Thank you. Just, <laughs> but we're about to enter a very sacred moment. Pope Francis's representative in Great Britain, Archbishop Buendia, is with us, along with all the bishops in Scotland, some bishops from other countries, priests from Scotland, from every diocese, from all over, from other countries. It's just a wonderful celebration, but it's a sacred moment. So I invite you just for a moment, just to be quiet. For the next couple of hours, we're entering into a very sacred space. We're praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Frank will receive this gift from God. And so let's just enter into it, knowing that it is a holy time. It's a sacred moment. And for a moment of silence, I invite you just to enter into that space. And I apologise for the noisy priests that are back there who are, <laughs> who are not entering into this space. But please, a moment of silence. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity of coming together at this sacred time. Pour your spirit into our hearts that we may participate fully in this celebration. And we pray in a special way for our bishop that he may be a man of wisdom, of intelligence, a man of prophecy, a man filled with the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear friends, welcome to this beautiful, joyful, very happy occasion, the Episcopal Consecration of Father Frank Dugan. To prepare ourselves to do this solemnly, to do it well in the presence of Almighty God and each other, we ask the Lord to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone chose to set your servant and priest Francis over your church on this day. Grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things he may direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year of King Uzzah's death, I saw the Lord seated on a high throne. His train filled the sanctuary. Above him stood seraphs, and he cried out, one to another in this way, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the threshold shook with the voice of the one who cried out, and the temple was filled with smoke. I said, What a wretched state I am in. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have looked at the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. With this he touched my mouth and said, See now, this has touched your lips. Your sin is taken away. Your iniquity is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, Here I am. Send me. The word of the Lord. I speak God. Surely 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there's a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. It is all God's work. It was God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the work of handing on this reconciliation. In other words, God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself not holding men's faults against them. And he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. So we are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing to us. And the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd, and the sheep do not belong to him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees a wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he is only a hired man and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father and I lay down my life for my sheep. And there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Galloway asks you to ordain this priest Francis to the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Francis Dugan, of the clergy of the Diocese of Motherwell, and until now, parish priest there of the parish of Our Lady of Lourdes, and chosen as the Bishop of Candida Casa, or Galloway, health and blessing. Called in Christ by providence, and also predestined according to the plan of him who does all things in conformity with the counsel of his will, that we might be for the praise of his glory. And while burdened as we are with solicitude for the whole church, we know the riches of divine grace. And so we are gladly accustomed to distribute the offices of honour and the power of governance over the holy people of God to those who excel for their honesty of life and dedication to the commandments of Christ. Reflecting on such reasons for the pastoral office, our mind has turned to the spiritual needs of the See of Candida Casa, or Galloway, which rendered vacant after the transfer of our venerable brother William Nolan to the Archdiocese of Glasgow, awaits a legitimate moderator of its diocesan life. We have therefore thought of you, beloved son, who are seen to be endowed with the human and priestly gifts which make you suitable to bear these responsibilities. Hence, on the advice of the dicastery for bishops and by our apostolic authority, we have appointed you as Bishop of Candida Casa or Galloway, conceding you the required rights and imposing on you the corresponding duties attached to this office. In observance, of the liturgical norms, you may receive Episcopal ordination anywhere outside Rome by any Catholic bishop. You must beforehand make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity to us and our successors in accordance with ecclesiastical law. With special affection and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of St. Margaret, the patroness of your cathedral church, we encourage you, beloved son, to be always there for your faithful, especially the humble and the poor, who moved by your word and example, may be able to place their true hope of salvation in God. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 22nd day of the month of December, in the year of our Lord 2023, the 11th of our pontificate. Francis. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a renewed word of welcome to you all as we gather to ordain Father Frank Duggan as Bishop of Galloway in the line of St. Ninian and in communion with the Universal Church. We are also very pleased to welcome among us distinguished representatives of civil and political life in this part of the country and to welcome our brothers and sisters in Christ, our ecumenical friends from other churches active in the area. 
We also have two of our brother bishops from England who are joining us, and above all, His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, who represents the Holy Father in the United Kingdom. You are, all of you, most welcome here. What we will witness here today is both one of the happiest and one of the most solemn things that the Church does, and that she has done since apostolic times, and those with a personal knowledge and memory of Jesus of Nazareth. We recall again how the Lord Himself chose twelve from among His disciples to be apostles, that is, the ones He would send from His side to take the good news to others. We recall the frailties and the limitations of those first Christians and how few they were. And yet we also recall their success with affection and with hope. As we like to read in the Psalms on Apostles' Feast Days, their span indeed extends throughout the earth. And yet apostles have first to be disciples of the Lord. They are called first to know and love the Lord and to learn to serve Him and to do His will. And only when the Lord breathes His Spirit upon them can they be called to go out as authentic witnesses to the gospel. Only then can they be, for example, like St. John the Baptist, the great precursor, and point to Jesus, not only to themselves, but to Jesus, and knowingly say, look, there is the Lamb of God. The readings that we have just heard were chosen by Father Frank for this occasion, and they help to illustrate this. In the first reading, Isaiah tells us that the gift of God's Spirit sends him to bring the good news to the poor, to bind up broken hearts, to proclaim a new kind of freedom and a time of the Lord's favor, comfort, gladness, and praise. We notice the other things that the Spirit brings through that ministry, but the word I'd like you to notice here and today is sends. To be an apostle, to be a bishop, is to be sent. A vocation to serve God's people is just that. It is a call from God, not a career choice. The vast majority of people nowadays choose a job, choose a career path, then train for it, then apply for it, then get interviewed for it, and then maybe eventually get it. A priest, and by extension a bishop, does not and cannot apply for the job. Having offered themselves for service in the church, they give up their own will in the matter and leave it to others to decide where to send them. This is not by accident. Rather, it is profoundly important for their whole life. Every deacon and priest and bishop you see here has been sent to the people he now serves. We all know that and understand that when we respond to God's call, but that is what it is a personal willingness to respond to God's call. Personally, of course, that means there is always a degree of uncertainty about what to expect, and there is always a kind of challenge in every new mission that we are given. But that is what we are trained for. That is what we are called to do. But letting us be sent by the Lord and by His Spirit is, when willingly and cheerfully embraced, a truly liberating experience, and I know that from my own heart. I believe that in the experience of the vast majority of us here, it is a joyful one. Once we entrust ourselves to the Lord, we can be confident that we are where the Lord wishes us to be. We are sent. We become truly apostolic. As we hear in our second reading from St. Paul, all of this is God's work. First, we are sent with the most wonderful good news. God in Christ is reconciling the world to Himself, not holding men's faults against them. Secondly, He entrusts to us the news that all are reconciled with God. And thirdly, it's as if we were ambassadors for Christ, and the message we carry to people is, be reconciled to God. Your new bishop will be solemnly entrusted with this task today. He will be consecrated and sent to you with this message, and it is a message of good news from our living Lord. Be reconciled to God. 
In the gospel reading, Jesus himself gives a name to this kind of leadership, to someone who is sent by God, who is filled with God's Spirit, and who comes willingly to serve his people with his whole life. That name is Shepherd. Jesus describes himself as the Good Shepherd in chapter 10 of John's Gospel, but this quickly became applied to the bishop as well. In the ancient world, a shepherd wasn't someone looked up to, but Jesus has transformed our view of what a shepherd can be, someone who knows his sheep as well as Jesus knows God his Father, someone who gives his life, his time, his energy, his in service to his sheep. Anyone with a small familiarity with the strands of what is demanded of a bishop knows just how daunting this is. But they will also know God's Spirit makes this call a happy one and a fulfilling one. This is surely one of the reasons our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has made so much of the clergy gaining the smell of the sheep, that is, being close to their people. And so, Frank, let me address a brief word to you personally as well. I've known you for an awfully long time, more than three decades, in fact, since you were a seminarian in Rome. We who have seen you grow in maturity and experience in the priesthood are very pleased to see you accept this new and more demanding call, this time to serve the people of Galloway. And we pray that the Lord who himself sends you will accompany you in all your ways. The task of oversight in the church is not an easy one. And much of what you will have to say and do due to your office will only be understood and appreciated once you're gone and it's all over. <laughs> but, but, you will have gained the confidence, you have gained the confidence of the Holy Father and those advising him, and you stand in a line going back to St. Ninian, whose times and circumstances were ones of an uncertainty and difficulty much greater than our own. You and your people are heirs to the golden thread of Catholic Christian faith in our country, and the tenacious, good, and faithful people who stood here before us. There is also a warm welcome for you here, from a well-established and affectionate local church, and you have roots here that will give you a good start. You also bring much of your own to this important task, beginning, beginning with a willingness to embrace lovingly God's will for you. Stay humble then and be open to the Lord in prayer. Be close to your people and always treat them as your brothers and sisters in Christ. Be ready to listen to them and accompany them with your presence and your prayers. Inspire them with your good conduct personally and your good decisions on their behalf. In a special way, be close to your, your priests and your deacons. Never forget to confirm them in faith and joyful service, especially by your own fidelity to the promises you will make shortly before us all here today. Finally, be assured of the support and prayers of your brother bishops, and of all here for your blessed and successful ministry in the ancient Church of Galloway. Thank you for taking up this burden, Frank, and may God bless you abundantly. The ancient rule of the Holy Father's decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and to discharge this office. Therefore, dear brother, do you resolve to carry out until death, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, the office entrusted to us by the apostles, and to be passed on to you through the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith pure and entire 
according to the tradition preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles. I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve as a devoted father to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to those in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do, with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of the church, will grant to this chosen one an abundance of his grace. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray. Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Anthony 
of Padua. Pray for us. Saint Francis Saviour. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Madden. Pray for us. Saint Bridget. Pray for us. Saint Quivox. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Francis of Rome. Pray for us. Saint Louise. Pray for us. Saint Bernadette. Pray for us. Saint Oswald. Pray for us. Saint David. Pray for us. Saint Margaret of Scotland. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort all the troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord. And as you raise the horn of priestly service over this your servant, Pour out upon him the power of your blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Gather the leaves. We've got the leaves as well. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, it is you who establish order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon this chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen for the episcopate may nourish your holy flock and may without reproach exercise before you the high priesthood, serving you night and day, that he may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the authority, he may have authority to forgive sins according to your command, that he may apportion offices according to your precept and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has made you a sharer in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. receive the gospel, and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre and let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading crown of glory.
Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
Oh, oh, oh. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfilment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he, is also, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. So Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> please. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ninian and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Francis our Bishop, who has been ordained today as shepherd for the Church of Galloway, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let's just pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord.
Good afternoon to everybody. I am very pleased to be present with you in this church of St. Peter of Chains, Androsan, for the ordination of Bishop Francis Dugan as the ninth Bishop of Galloway. I bring in particular the greetings and the blessing of His Holiness, Pope Francis, who desire to be close to you all through my person. To the clergy, to the religious and lay faithful of this diocese, I ask to support and to pray for the new bishop entrusted to you by the Pope. May God bless you. Hiya. <laughs> I don't know if you remember those of you that know how to drive. When you start to learn how to drive, you try to do a combination of things at once, and it doesn't really happen. So trying to walk up and down there with this on, blessing people, trying not to kick your crozier, and then your MC says, would you smile? I'm trying my best, which, but that is a, a, a sign of how lucky I've been with Father Stephen and how well organized I've been uh, with Father Stephen and my thanks go to him. <laughs> this is normally the time at the end of a great feast um, when we offer thanks or, and offer thanks to, to many people. And I won't do too many individual thanks because there are too many to give, but I would particularly like to say my own kind of late welcome and thanks to His Excellency Archbishop Ben Diaz. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us and thank you for giving me a whiskey on the day <laughs> when, when I was down. I wouldn't normally recommend at 10.30 in the morning um, a, a whiskey, but thank you for that. But thank you above all for your support uh, and for your presence and um, for your prayers. As I said, there would be too many people to thank. If I were to do that, it would begin from today and all the people who have done so much to make this a, a wonderful celebration. But to, to then continue, would have to go right back to the beginning of my vocation, uh, not a priest, but as a, as, a, not as a bishop, sorry, as a priest, and then right back to the start of my life. It would go all the way back to, to my parents, who have both gone to God, uh, and they would be the first ones uh, to be thanked. And then from them, right through a succession of people, family and friends and priests and teachers and so many others that have been with me throughout my life and throughout my vocation, throughout my priestly ministry. And you know, it's represented by some of the things that I have with me today. So the, the ring that I had made was actually made with the, the, the residue of my dad's estate. There was a surprise, it was a little bit was left over from it and decided to, to make the ring and get the ring from that. So this is from my dad. You know, this, this ring uh, today. And so, my mother would be raging, so I better mention her <laughs> as well. <laughs> She'll have something to be saying about that. Um, but the other things, like the, the petrol cross that I wear under here is from people who are very precious to me. This chasuble is the chasuble I had in my priestly ordination, and it was given to me by Father Jack Burns, who was a priest who was very important to me in my formative years. And all the other things uh, that I have here, I've come through help and support of other people who've wanted to buy things from me. It's great, I haven't spent a penny um, <laughs> on this. But what has reminded me, and, and, and you should never forget anyway, is that it's not about just me 
my whole story is about a range of people uh, that have been with me and continue to be with me. And that's what it means to be church. You know, we're not people who have a private relationship with God and that's where it ends. We have a relationship together with God uh, and with each other. And that's, that's a good reminder to me of that and something we should never forget. And over the past few weeks, um, the very past, past few very quick weeks, there's been a range of emotions that I've gone through. And I'm certainly not going to take you through all of those. But I've found comfort in a number of places. And it may not surprise you, I've found some comfort in friends and family and also in the scriptures. Uh, my prayers have been a little bit focused, more focused than ever. Sometimes we're focused, sometimes we're not. They've really been focused over the past few weeks. And particular, something like the second reading um, from today's Mass that Archbishop Cushley uh, mentioned, my thanks go to him uh, as well for ordaining me, I suppose, um, <laughs> for that today. But, and, and he mentioned it in his words. When, when I chose that reading, I actually chose it particularly for the beginning and the end, where it speaks of the love of Christ overwhelms us. And at the end it says we are ambassadors for Christ. But having chosen that reading and then taking that away and retreat with me, the thing that then jumped out is right in the middle. And as Archbishop Cushley said, it is all God's work. That is the thing that, that jumped out at me and should stay with me. That we can sometimes be so consumed by what is happening to us and then what we need to do, and that includes me then thinking about my role as a bishop, is to remember always it is all God's work. And it begins and it ends with me. And so, it ends with him. <laughs> oh, great. And this is recorded. <laughs> As I said, it is all God's work. <laughs> and, and furthermore, further into the scriptures, the, the phone call I received was from Father Andrew Coy, who's the Archbishop's secretary, um, who's a gentleman. And he telephoned me on the Sunday that week before Christmas uh, and invited me down to come down to, to meet his Excellency. And so the plan was then to come down on the Tuesday. After a sleepless night on the Sunday night, then on the Monday, I was met with the scriptures. And here was where God, sometimes God is subtle, sometimes he's quite direct. And the gospel there was quite direct to me. It was the Annunciation, not the Annunciation to Mary, but the Annunciation to Joseph. And what do we see there? We see that Joseph has one plan. This is what he decides he will do. And Gabriel, for God steps in and says, that's all very well. This is God's plan for you. And that's a great lesson we learn in Joseph, who immediately then does what God wishes and what God tells him to do. And so the Lord kind of walked me into saying yes by giving me that gospel on the Monday to have thought and prayed over to then go down and to meet his excellency on the Tuesday. And then if there was any doubt, the day after that, on the Wednesday, there was another gospel, and this was the Annunciation, the one that we're most familiar with, the Annunciation to Our Lady. Again, my prayers were focused, uh, and on that gospel, I really caught, took out things from that that I hadn't noticed as much before. We focus, of course, on Our Lady's yes, that Mary says yes to God's plan, but that comes at the end of that passage. It begins with what the angel says to her, and he says three important things. He says, the Lord is with you. Then he says, do not be afraid. And finally he says, nothing is impossible to God. Having said those three things to Mary, the Lord is with you, do not be afraid, nothing is impossible to God. He's then ready to hear her, her answer. And she's able to give that answer, which is she responds with her yes to God. And it's with that in mind that I was able to be more comfortable in giving the yes, because I was sure of God's love, God's presence, and God's grace. And then a third thing happened to me, and it wasn't through the scriptures. Instead, it was an encounter with a priest of the Diocese of Galloway, Father Martin Chambers. <laughs> it's funny, I haven't said anything about him, and yet you laugh. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Father Martin Chambers, he is a present parish priest in Trun, but he's also the, now the bishop-elect of Dunkeld. I think it'd be good if we could give him a warm round of applause. <laughs> a 
And as we congratulate him, I'm also here present is Bishop Robson, the Bishop Emeritus of Dunkeld, and Father Kevin Golden, who is the administrator of the Diocese of Dunkeld. To you, I would say, thank you for taking him off our hands. <laughs> It's, it's nice to know there's one fewer thing I have to deal with <laughs> as I come in here. No, in fact, the fact is that Diocese of Keld has won a watch uh, with Father Chambers uh, going there, and we look forward to celebrating his ordination next month. But the conversation I had with Father Martin um, was, was him starting to talk about the diocese. So, hopefully unsurprisingly, I was quite self-absorbed for the first few days of having spoken uh, with the Archbishop and then um, the news of my appointment as Bishop-elect. Then when speaking to Father Martin, he immediately started to talk to me about the diocese and particularly about the clergy. I'd already heard people speak well of the clergy of Galloway. Others from outside the diocese say, that's a good presbytery you've got there. And Father Martin started to speak to me about the different priests. Don't worry, he was okay, he was kind. <laughs> But as he started to speak of them, it took me out of myself to no longer simply think about myself and what was happening to me, but think of the place to which I was going, the place to which I'm coming, and to think a little bit more about this diocese, what this is and what it means. And, and, and that was a great progression for me to come out of myself and look forward, to look forward to coming here. And someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, I said, are you looking forward? I said, do you know what I am? after the, the initial shock and, and then the wondering whether I'm the right person for this or whatever, but say, no, I am looking forward to coming here. And that's because, not just of what, what Father Martin said, but then having traveled around the diocese, I made an effort to go around to meet all the parish priests. I look forward to meeting everybody over time, all the faithful, the religious, the retired clergy as well. But I wanted, first of all, to go around all of the parishes and just to go around and meet the priests. And it was a joy to do that. It was a privilege to meet them and to see what great work they are doing. The great priests that we have in this diocese who are knocking their pan in for you, who are working hard in the vineyard and that we can see so well. And so we celebrate that the ministry of the priests in our diocese, and I think it's important for them to hear that because they maybe don't hear it as often as they should, uh, the, the great work they are doing. So it was, a, it was a great privilege and pleasure for me to travel around with them or to visit them. And what that told me, is that yes, this is a diocese with a noble history, and it does have a great and noble history. This is the place that Ninian came to first. This is where the faith came first and then spread to other parts of the country over time. This is the cradle of Christianity. You're welcome. <laughs> this is where Christianity came. That's its noble history and its noble past, but it's not just about that. This diocese has a noble presence. Right here and now, the faith is being preserved, proclaimed, and celebrated. And already over just two or three weeks, I am seeing that and able to celebrate that. And it's something for us all to celebrate. It's easy to begin by saying it's not what it was. That's fine, it is what it is. And it's a place where the gospel is being proclaimed. This is the church of Jesus Christ here and now, and you're part of that. And it's something to thank God for. And we begin by celebrating that. Because it is with God's grace, having begun with Ninian, we are carrying on what began then. So we don't simply celebrate a great past, we celebrate a great present and look forward to a great future. My yes is the thing that God invited me to give, but what I've recognized is there are so many yeses being said all the time throughout this diocese. Each of you and so many others are continuing to say yes to God, and that is something to be celebrated as well. So there is work to do. There's always work to do. But we've got this because God has got this. Because what was Mary told and what are we told? The Lord is with us. There is no need to be afraid and nothing is impossible to God. And it's all God's work. So let's get on with it. Let's stand and pray. Oh, sorry. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow me down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the spirits of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor, that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Amen.